So there's been a lot of complaints that with the update to iOS 16 and all the subsequent updates of 16.1, 0.2, 0.3, battery life has taken a huge hit on even some of the newer iPhones like the 14 Pro Max. Now that could be a multitude of things. Maybe Apple didn't optimize iOS 16 as much as they did with iOS 15 because the 13 Pro Max with iOS 15 on release date was absolutely amazing from a battery life standpoint. I'd get two, sometimes even three days of use out of one single charge on a 13 Pro Max, and now that same 13 Pro Max on iOS 16 can almost not get through a day. Apple did add a lot of features to iOS 16 that required constant updates and fetching notifications, like live activities and even the new lock screen with lock screen widgets, always kind of fetching more data from those corresponding applications. But again, we shouldn't be getting such a big hit between iOS 15 and iOS 16, from a battery life perspective. So in this video, what I wanna do is show you guys a few features that can be easily implemented on your end to make sure that you guys get the best battery life overall, not only from the immediate future, but also from battery health standpoint long-term, especially if you plan to keep the phone for one, two, maybe even three years or longer. So without further ado, let's talk about what you can do to make sure you get the best battery life and optimize your experience. Let's get into it. Okay everyone, let's hop right into this video. So the first thing I always recommend people do, and if you watch our beta update videos, you know that I do this in every video, is go into your settings, scroll down to where it says battery, let it load its graph, and then down here it's gonna say the last 24 hours or the last 10 days. Always go to the last 10 days because it gives you a good running average of A, how long your battery life is lasting, and B, how much you use your phone as well. But then what I like to do is, first off you get the first two statistics here. You get the five and a half hours of screen on time, and one and a half hours of screen off time. But the most important part here is the applications. So it's which applications are draining the most battery life from a percentage standpoint, or you can actually change it by the actual time. So you can see how much battery use in the last 10 days you've been using with certain applications. So you can see that I'm a heavy YouTube user and it tells you and it breaks it down how much is on screen and how much is a background. So the number one thing I like to tell people that are trying to save battery life is, Look at the actual applications that are taking up background stuff. So you can see my photos app right here, an hour and 23 minutes of, on, of screen on time, an hour and 52 minutes of background screen off time, meaning that it's sucking up a lot of battery in the background and that's probably one of the reasons why it's taking up so much battery life and my battery life is draining so quickly. Same with Gmail, about an hour and 55 minutes in the background and things of that nature. So always go on here and go through all your applications. So you can see that my progressive snapshot, that's an app that is primarily only run in the background. So that is going to take up battery without you even noticing. So go into your battery life settings, see what's taking up the most battery. And what I'll tell everybody to do is adjust how you actually use those applications moving forward. So that is what I recommend doing first. Let's go on to the next one. Now this next one might seem like a simple one, but it has to do with low power mode. So first off, make sure that you have low power mode in your control center. That is what the icon looks like. And to add it into your control center, just go back into your settings, go into control center and make sure that it's added from here, as you can see, low power mode. And when you turn on low power mode, a lot of people aren't aware that a lot of stuff still happens in the background. So what low power mode does is it works by suspending mail fetch, background app refresh, auto downloads. The main things that it does for you is actually stops mail fetch in the background, it stops background app refresh, and it stops all auto downloads. So that's pretty much what's happening in the background when you do turn low power mode on. And if you're okay with those things happening, then low power mode is a great way to extend your battery life by up to 50% in terms of time-wise. So definitely use low power mode at your disposal whenever needed. Now the next feature is making sure that your auto lock settings are in the right situation. So if you go into your battery life and you see that your home screen is taking up a lot of actual battery life overall, then what you wanna to wanna to do is go into your settings, go to display and brightness, and make sure that you have the correct settings on for auto lock. Right now you can see that it's grayed out because I'm in low power mode, and low power mode has a default setting of those 30 seconds. So auto lock, I have it at five minutes just because I make these videos and I don't want the screen to lock up on me whenever I'm speaking. But for the most part, I do recommend keeping it at the 30 seconds. And it's going to dim the brightness originally and then it'll go into lock screen mode. And then again, if you do have an iPhone 14 or newer or 14 Pro, make sure to turn off the always on display, which will be right underneath the raise to wake. So down here, you'll see uh, always on display. Make sure to turn that off if you wanna save some battery. Okay, so now let's quickly talk about background app refresh. So by default, unless otherwise stated, whenever you download an application and you open it for the first time, you'll get a little pop-up asking if you want the background app refresh to occur. And if you go into your settings, you can actually fully customize which apps get background app refreshes and which ones don't. So for instance, when you do turn low power mode on, it'll stop background app refreshes for everything until low power mode is turned back off. So if you go to general, 
go into background app refresh, then you have a list of every single one of your applications with a little toggle to let you know that these are actually turned on. So if you want to turn these off, you can customize which ones you want off and on. So for instance, something like Burger King, I can just turn off because I don't care that it's refreshing in real time in the background, right? But maybe something like Google Maps, I want to keep that on because if I'm driving somewhere, I want to be able to know where I'm going and I want it to adjust in real time. And then another nice feature, which I like to tell people to actually turn on is the actual main setting on the top here. You can actually change it to just Wi-Fi only. So using Wi-Fi saves a lot more battery than using data. So if you want your apps to just kind of refresh when you're at home or refresh when you're in the office, when you're connected to a Wi-Fi, then it'll do that. But if you want it always on, Wi-Fi cellular is the way to go, or you can completely turn it off. So now let's talk about location services. So let's go back into the setting, scroll down to where it says privacy and security, go into your location services right here. And now this is what's probably taking up the most amount of battery life overall. So location services is exactly what it sounds like. It's giving permission to applications to let you use your location in order to personalize and adapt the experience to you a little bit better versus somebody that doesn't have it. Now there's a few options on here. So if you go into this app right here, you can actually have your location services shared never, ask next time or when I share, while using the app or always. So if you leave it on always, that means it's always looking for your location no matter what. If the application is open in the background, open in front of you, it's going to always be searching for location and that of course is gonna take up a lot of your battery life. And now, not only will it take battery life, but if you're somebody that has a limited amount of data, it's also gonna take up a lot of data. So what I like to do is to have most of them unless otherwise needed, I like to have them so it's always on the while using the application. So whenever I open up the application, it'll know that I want my location shared because I need to share my location. But there's some that don't really make sense. So for instance, again, Google Maps is a good example. Maybe something like Abode, which is my home security system. Those are all applications I wanna always have it turned on. But then there's other ones that doesn't make, really make much sense. So for instance, if I go to Hotels Tonight, yes, I want Hotels Tonight to have it while using app, but not when it's always on. So whenever those applications come up, they'll look for my location in app versus always looking for it and having it ready to go, which only takes another half second for it to look it up. And then one final setting is if you click on any of these, there's also the precise location. So precise location allows apps to use your specific location. With this setting off, apps can only determine your appropriate location, so or your approximate location. So basically, if this is turned off, you get a bigger radius of where you could be, and it's not as precise. So something like Google Maps, again, needs this turned on. But something like Bali Sports, you can turn that off, no issues whatsoever, and it also saves a little bit more battery as well. Another setting to consider toggling is going back into the battery section. Let it load up, but you're going to want to go to battery health and charging. So here you get a bunch of information that's very relevant. So for instance, my battery is at 89% since having this phone when it did release last year. And then you have two options down here. You have optimized battery charging and then clean energy charging. The optimized battery charging is what's gonna help your actual battery life long-term over the lifespan of the battery. So basically what happens is to reduce battery aging, iPhone learns from your daily charging routine so it can wait to finish charging past 80% until you need to use it. So for instance, if you charge your phone overnight, it'll charge your phone up to 80% up maybe at four or five o'clock in the morning and it knows that you wake up at 6.30, then it'll finish up the charge and top it off to 100% when it's around six o'clock in the morning. So that's what it means by optimized battery charging by not just having it fully charged up and always plugged in and continuously charging even though it doesn't need to be charged. And then clean energy charging is exactly what it sounds like. It tries to optimize the time of when you actually charge your iPhone. Right now it's only available in the US and some other countries. But basically what it does is it recognizes that, hey, it's nighttime, let's use up more power at night. This is when power is the cheapest and when power is most readily available because there aren't millions of people trying to use the energy at the same time. So that's what clean energy charging really does. So the last few settings, again, have to do with privacy and security. We go in here, but instead of going to location services, let's actually go to Bluetooth. So this allows you to actually track and see which applications have Bluetooth turned on. And you can see that all of them that require Bluetooth have it turned on. So most of them, let's say for instance, like the Marshall speaker, the Bose music one that requires Bluetooth. ESPN probably doesn't require Bluetooth. So turning it off whenever using ESPN is a good way to actually save some battery. So this allows you to customize which applications are able to use Bluetooth versus not. So if there are applications like MGM Resorts, that does not need to have Bluetooth turned on when it's being used. So let's save some battery when it does open up MGM Resorts in order to be good to go. Now this next feature has to do with notifications. So if you go into your settings, go to notifications, 
you want to be able to manage your notifications correctly. So for instance, if you have immediate notifications turned on all the time for every single one, that's going to turn on your screen. That's going to make sure you're always on display is always showing actual notifications. And there's a bunch of different things that just don't make sense to have turned on. So go through all the applications. So again, for instance, maybe for AMC theater, I don't actually need to be able to get every notification whenever I need to. So just add it to your scheduled summary. So that what I like about the scheduled summary is that it gives you all the notifications in kind of in one little board and not multiple notifications, you know, during a certain period of time, which for me is between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. That is when my schedule summary is good to go. And then two more settings, which one of them might be actually be very surprising and contrary to popular belief. But if you go into your app carousel, it's actually better for your battery life overall to keep these applications open. Because think about it, if you're driving a car or turning a car on in the cold of winter, it takes a lot of energy and power to kind of get that car going versus maybe if you keep the car on, it's a little bit easier to get into the car and get going and get moving. Same thing applies with the actual RAM and RAM management of having multiple apps open at the same time. So apps in the backgrounds are paused when they're not active and they aren't using any battery life, if at all, while closing out of an app actually purges it completely from the iPhone RAM, which then whenever you need to open that app again, then the RAM needs to kind of activate again and it actually hurts the battery life overall. So if you have applications open in the background and you think closing them is actually gonna save you battery life, think before you actually close any of them because it's probably not gonna save you any battery life. And then lastly, which is probably one that's obvious, but try to stick to Apple native applications. Now you can probably see on my home screen that some of the applications that I use are not Apple native ones. For instance, I use Gmail for my email, I use Google Maps for my maps, but if you're somebody that wants to stay in the Apple ecosystem, those applications are better optimized for the iPhone. So for instance, if you're a Chrome user, Switching over to Safari like I did is actually much better for battery life. Probably using Apple Maps over Google Maps is better. Using the Mail app versus Gmail is definitely better. So if you can stick to the Apple native apps, those are going to be the most optimized for battery versus other third-party ones, which they don't really care much about what it does to your battery overall versus Apple. That's what they do care about. But let's finish up this video, everybody. So that is going to do for this video, everybody. If you do implement at least some of these changes, you should see a nice like 10 to 20% increase in overall battery life over time. Again, if Apple is consistently putting out updates that make sure you're fetching data consistently from different applications, whether it is first party, native, or third party applications, your battery is going to take a big hit, especially with all the things that Apple's doing with iOS 16. So let me know with a comment down below if this helped improve your battery life, if you learned anything new. And this should work with not only the newer 14 Pro Maxes and 14 Pros, but also with the 13 and the 12 and the 11 and even the 10. As long as it's running iOS 16, and you implement these changes, you should be good to go from a battery life standpoint, especially with older devices that are getting drained faster and faster. But that is gonna do it, like I mentioned. If you did learn something new, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And also leave a comment down below, maybe some things that you change when your usage or what's a feature set to make sure you get the best battery life overall that maybe wasn't mentioned in this video and we'll discuss in the comments. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you do wanna watch some more iOS, iPadOS, or macOS content, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando. I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.